Так получилось, что начало операции совпало, совершенно случайно совпало с днем рождения одного из наших выдающихся военно So that was, of course, uh, President Vladimir Putin speaking at Moscow's Luzhniki Stadium. And if it seemed as if it cut off kind of abruptly there into the music, that is actually the experience that people had watching it live. They say that it was some sort of technical problem, and that certainly seems plausible. Uh, alternative explanations is that some sort of hacker interfered with the live stream of what was considered to be a major uh, appearance, a rare public appearance by Vladimir Putin. In any event, though, we do want to give you a little bit of what he actually had to say. At one point, Putin paraphrased the Bible because anyone can do that, it turns out, to say there is no greater love than giving up one's soul for one's friends. And he continued to insist his actions were necessary to prevent genocide, a claim flatly denied by leaders around the globe. Uh, shoulder to shoulder, they help and support each other, he said of uh, Russian soldiers. We have not had unity like this for a long time. And certainly there were cheers uh, coming from the crowd. In terms of unity with the rest of the world, I feel like Russia's hit uh, a low for at least some period of time. Now at that rally, there were a lot of people, both inside and outside of the stadium. Moscow police say there were 200,000 people. And while Putin appeared there mostly to speak about the current illegal invasion of Ukraine, the event was for the eighth anniversary of Russia's annexation of the Crimean Peninsula. Now, there were 200,000 people there, and many news accounts of this are saying that this was a massive pro-war demonstration. And it is impossible to say to what extent the crowd approves of what's going on or even understands what's going on in Ukraine. But you should also understand that by no means was everyone there voluntarily. Um, one Moscow social worker, Lena, spoke to the press and said, we are forced to go to all such events. We can't say no, it's out of the question. I hate this whole thing and I am very afraid. They told us that if we don't go, it's going to be very strict this time, no explanations will be accepted. We would be fired right away, I have no way out. I don't care about politics, I don't understand what's going on. Students apparently were required to go as well. So it is impossible to say what percentage of the, percentage of the crowd gives a damn about seeing Vladimir Putin or approves of what's happening right now in Ukraine. Yeah, I find the crowd entirely irrelevant, so is there a Big chunk of the Russian population that is in favor of the war? Yes. So could you fill a stadium full of people with that? Yes. Is there a giant chunk of the Russian population that's against the war? Yes. Could you fill a stadium filled with 200,000 people of the, of them? Yes. So it's just optics and theatrics, ignored completely. By the way, uh, that this is them trying to outdo the Ukrainians on, on optics and they're failing miserably overall. You know what the Ukrainians did today? Well, they put out strollers in the middle of a square for every baby killed by Putin. Jesus. Now that is super powerful and way better than this BS fascist rah rah, uh, you know, stadium uh, rally here. Okay, and and so speaking of fascist, so he says, oh, the most uh, uh, important thing in the Bible is to sacrifice your soul uh, for your friends. But they're not sacrificing for their friends, they're sacrificing for you and your ego. And that certainly ain't in the Bible. And then uh, finally, uh, he mentions genocide and how the Ukrainians are doing it. So that's when you know that anyone supporting Putin here or otherwise uh, is absurd and an obvious liar. There is potential genocide going on here, but it definitely isn't the Ukrainians doing it to the Russians, you would have to be disingenuous, corrupt, or the biggest idiot in the world to think that the Ukrainians have aggressively committed war crimes against the Russians. I don't see the Ukrainians in Moscow or St. Petersburg. Yeah. I see the Russians all over Ukraine. Anyone saying otherwise is very likely, other than the possibility of idiot, etc., is a very bad faith actor who is doing it for some nefarious reason, and no one should believe them. Ida. So I'm back. <laughs> um, I think it's interesting to watch. Very sad to see strollers, very sad to see people die anywhere in the world. I would love to have seen this type of coverage with people of color who are suffering like this. But it's 
from that kid that comes from you know the religious background, it's so interesting to see how religious doctrine is always used to move the masses and the people who are suffering, the people who are broke, the people who are at the hands of these multi-million billion dollar people and their agendas and getting us under control. It just speaks to you know the lack of education that we have here in America that people are picking a side and they got their Ukraine flag on their Facebooks and on their and they have they didn't know where Ukraine was, you know, two weeks, two months ago. So I just think it's interesting to watch this, but I feel so sad because war is so profitable, right? One of the greatest things about war for those people is that it's very profitable. I don't want to go anywhere because I don't want to buy gas. It's so expensive. And so let us always remember that there is always an agenda from all of those people who are at the top who constantly eat when we suffer. And let's not forget that the people of Ukraine are the victims, just like the people in the Middle East, the people in on the continent of Africa are all the victims. And you only get to see whoever the powers that be select yeah. to be important yeah. enough to cover. Yeah, you're definitely right. Uh, look, obviously, people are going to make a lot of money off of this. Some openly advocating for war. Clearly, they see it to be in their interest, either political or financial. But even some of the people supposedly uh, being against it. Marjorie Green is saying, let's not send them weapons. But she did invest in Raytheon and Lockheed Martin before she said that. So either way, she apparently is going to get what she wants. Um, but I want to give the panel a couple of other things uh, to consider. First of all, that amidst that speech with Putin talking about the Bible and brotherly love and all that, uh, they are doing everything they can to kill as many people in Ukraine right now, continuing their attack on Kyiv and also uh, for the first time using a barrage of missiles to strike the western city of Lviv. Um, Ukrainian's armed forces said that six missiles were fired. It's believed that they were air launched cruise missiles fired from warplanes over the Black Sea. The Ukrainian military says, by the way, that they shot down two of them. It's impossible to confirm or deny that. But from this map, you can see that Lviv uh, circle there is uh, very far to the west, incredibly close, by the way, to the border with Poland, not that far from Slovakia uh, either. And that is significant for a few reasons. From the Polish point of view, it can be considered somewhat of a provocation. It also potentially gives us a bit of an insight into Vladimir Putin's military strategy. Um, because it, it is not generally thought at this point that Lviv is important strategically for the movement of Russian troops or any Thing like that. It is, however, being used um, for a few other reasons. One, it's a safe haven for Ukrainians fleeing other war torn parts of the country. It's believed that right now Lviv has about 200,000 Ukrainians displaced from other parts of the country. It only had 700,000 people to begin with. So imagine how swollen with internal refugees it is right now. It's also, by the way, a place and a bit of the infrastructure necessary for weapons and supplies to come into Ukraine from outside of the country. Coming in from Poland and these other countries, they might well go through Lviv. Well, if they destroy the capacity for Ukraine to bring those things in, then that could have ripple effects on the conflict. At the same time, though, Apparently, there was a conversation just in the last day between Vladimir Putin as well as Erdogan, the president of Turkey, talking about Russia's demands. And that includes things that you're probably familiar with at this point, including that Ukraine would have to stay neutral and not join any groups like NATO. They would have to disarm, protect the Russian language in the country, and also go through so called denazification. There are also some other demands having to do with the contested territories in the eastern portion of Ukraine. Um, these are largely the concerns that have been cited throughout. What do you all think about the ongoing assault and the possibilities of peace? So, well, first, uh, I think uh, you got to ask yourself, uh, what would Jesus do? Because that's what Putin was asking. And I think he would probably bomb Libya, right? I mean, uh, that's bombing refugees on, the, on their way out of the country. Very uh, Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, okay, obviously I mock uh, because it's absurd. So why bomb that city? Um, well, as John explained, there's refugees. There's also a lot of media there. That's where they're based. So uh, what message are you sending when you bomb innocent civilians? Um, the message you're sending is we have no morals and we have no limits. It is a so why would you want to send that message? It's a form of intimidation. You keep going in this war. You have no idea how much we'll murder you. Anyone defending Putin is a monster. Okay, now the good news. Um, those negotiations that have actually started now, the, the 
negotiations they were theoretically having is mainly to run out the clock by the Russians. Putin was never serious about it. And whatever promise they made, they instantly violated the next day. But the ones going through Erdogan are real because Putin and Erdogan are, are it's complicated. But in a lot of ways, allies, okay? But Turkey, of course, is part of NATO, so they're also our ally. It's a real mm -hmm. arbiter, okay? So um, Putin goes to Erdogan and says, here, this is what I'll take. That's a great development, okay? Because there's nothing on that list that is impossible. So there's the bad stuff that is totally doable. I mean, denazification. Yes, we all want to say, screw you, Zelensky is Jewish, his family was killed by the Nazis, saying that they're denazifying is absurd. But it doesn't cost any land, it doesn't cost any lives. So you say, oh, of course, we have driven out the Nazis from Ukraine and we hope the Russians do likewise, right? Mm -hmm. So that goes in the bucket of diplomacy, it sucks, we bite the bullet, we move on, okay? Um, and, uh, and all those other like verbal requests are not as big a deal, right? It's easy for me to say it's up to the Ukrainians on whether they can swallow that pill or not, right? But they, it's also easy for us to say, don't take it, be proud, they're the ones getting killed, right? So uh, in terms of the land, well, look, the bad news is they were vague on it, but it looks like they're starting to inch towards give us the breakaway republics, do not go into NATO, and maybe we have a deal and we withdraw. And consider Crimea a part of Russia. And Crimea now officially becomes part of Russia. Okay, now I hate that deal, but I hate those people dying in the potential World War III more. So it's not up to me or Ida or John to decide. Obviously, it's up to Zelensky and the Ukrainian people to decide. But that's a little bit of hope because now Russian withdrawal is on the table, Ida. So um, I can't get into the intricacies of this because I don't ever pretend to know what I don't know. Um, I, I just learned something from Jank listening to him, and I have been reading. But this is a this is something that, like I said, I was not even aware of until a couple of weeks ago when this whole thing started. What I can say is, if you are watching the news, not just domestically but internationally, there is this really big push for a certain group of people that look the same, trying to um, just continue on their oppression of the people and just gain control. And we have to be aware of what is happening around us because we gaze over there and look, oh, look what's happening in Russia and Ukraine. And stuff like that is happening in America. And we just got, I just feel like we need to be informed on what's happening right here because they distract us a lot with what's going on in other places. And I just, I feel like the the whole, I watched these videos of these Russian women that were talking to the media and, the, and you see the police just taking them away. There are some people, some men, Donald Trump and others who actually get aroused at the possibility of being able to do that right here. And so while we're watching this, we need to really watch because we are we are so vulnerable to all of this stuff and and the idiots in in DC are making it easy for this to happen to us yeah, I mean, we certainly see the legislation pass, the, the the new anti-abortion bill in Missouri, all that they've done in Texas and Idaho. They wanna they wanna make it illegal for you to do gender affirming care for your kids. Like literally, they're trying to give you life in prison for moving out of a state to exercise your rights. They're legislating what you can do when you aren't even in that state anymore. So you're 100 percent right about that. I just want to say this because we always we always frame this stuff like we have that that American exceptionalism thing. It's not us. They're doing that over there. Those are the people. We're not like that. We're American. That that stuff is happening here. And even though it, there may not be an active war that you where you can see the casualties, but there is a war and there are casualties that you just don't see. Yeah. And it's not just happening over there. Well, that's exactly why uh, the Tucker Carlson's of the world are supporting Putin because they like what they're seeing, uh, an authoritarian thug who oppresses others for only a specific group of people's benefit. They're like, what's there not to like? Yeah. So he's he's the white authoritarian 
tyrannical uh, ruler they've always wished for. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.